Hi, in this video we're going to look at some of the um, changes we've made to the function editor in terms of making it a, a more pleasant environment to spend time in and hopefully some uh, time saving and effort saving improvements. So initially when we first look at the function editor nothing appears to have changed. Let's have a look at a couple of the simple things at the front end as it were. Um, for instance, We've all had those uh, occasions where we've maybe unfolded a meta node or we've moved meta nodes around and we've lost meta nodes and trying to find where they are underneath other meta nodes and nodes is, is very tricky. So we've introduced just a little warning symbol here that says, you know, we've got one node on top of another. And sure enough, there it is. That will pop up every time we get even the slightest overlap. It's a handy little warning just to remind you that uh, you know you're hiding things, making things difficult to find. Another change we've made is if I right click on the connector, you'll see we've got three buttons here now. We can delete the connection from directly in the function editor without having to uh, resort to the keyboard. Whilst we're talking about the connector, before I go on to the other two buttons, it's worth noting that we've made the connection of nodes a much cleaner, almost has haptic feedback. You know, you can almost feel that line snapping to the connector. So no more guessing whether you're connected or not. We don't have to have a microscope. We've got the snap, which will drag the line and connect. Oops, let me just put that back. The other thing you may have noticed, we have go to source and go to destination. These sound a lot more complicated than they actually are. If I click go to source, it clicks on the node or selects the node at the beginning of that connector line, basically. So that's the source, the beginning. And if I right click again and go to the destination, all it does is select the next node in that particular link. Again, I'm sure you've all seen some of the node structures where we end up with lines crossing over lines and nodes and, you know, it all gets very complicated. This is, again, another helper to just try and get us to where we want to be in the shortest amount of time possible. Um, so uh, other things that we've done, let's have a look up here at the uh, options. We've included a grid now so that we can see our layout and we can, <laughs> we can keep it nice and tidy if that is what we want to do. I like a nice tidy grid uh, network and everything snapping together quite nicely. So for me, that grid is a, is a nice visual aid. We also have constrained the nodes to the grid. Again, it's a, it's an old button, but it's there and it continues to work. So I can snap now nice and clean and crisp between each of the layers of the, of the grid. Align all nodes to grid. So once you finish your playing and you want to get everything aligned and, and, and move on as it were, we can click this button and that will align all of the grids in the network. Let's just move this across, see if we can make that happen a little bit more. Now, I've already got snap to grid on, so that's why <laughs> I'm not being able to see that. So if I just switch that off, constraint nodes to grid. Okay. So now I can move things around as freely as I want to move them. And then I can, as I say, we can switch this, align all nodes to grid now. So now we're aligned with the grid. Um, switch the constraint to grid and we can start putting things where we really should have them nice and tidy. Um, and uh, last but by no means least, we have introduced a navigator. You'll see it's just appeared down in the bottom right hand corner. This is to help us again when we're in the middle of a very complex node network. We can grab the window and we can drag around and navigate and have a look at what we're doing with a lot more clarity and certainty than we had previously. Which reminds me, whilst we're zoomed in on this, 
we've also added the the ability for the connector when we're looking for a node to connect to if it's not in the window we're in now we've added an auto scroll so we can scroll around and navigate to where we want our connector to go to so again there's no need to you know release the node and right click and drag and drag and drag until we know where we're going or even reposition nodes we can just let the node do the uh, the connector do the hard work and we can scroll around like so and again with the navigator we can get back to where we were and just scroll around few more things uh, <laughs> quite interesting if if you are so inclined and you are organized way more than I am and that is just outside the function editor within a display and workspace we can look at the interface colors as we have now added the, the ability to customize our colors within the function editor so we can change the color of 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 connectors so connectable handle you know as you you scan around view will automatically show you which connectors work by highlighting in a certain color so we have we have our default range of colors and you can now go and customize to your heart's content so those connectors along with the ability to customize the color of a node which has been around since forever but you can imagine now if we start building up our own way of working or our you know our team's way of working we can get to where we want to be again so much more quickly further customization within the function editor can be seen uh, once we turn off uh, constrained nodes to grid just because it's easier for the time being to see what we can do which is that uh, we can make our nodes bigger and we can make our node previews bigger just to uh, aid um, ease of seeing what's going on uh, I, I find that to be a, a very useful um, tool especially for as older users of view if i can't see what's going on at least i know now that i can resize my uh, nodes accordingly uh, and move them around so that uh, it's easier to to work out what the changes are between nodes we can always resize that by switching back on constrained nodes to grid and then resize um, but again useful for being able to see what's going on in more complicated node networks combined with the navigator means that we can make our nodes as big as we want them to be and still be able to navigate efficiently within the function editor whilst we're in the function editor at uh, you know in the in the back end as it were um, another thing to just show you would be that uh, in terms of the node preview we can show the new node preview, i.e. we can see what's going on, or we can right click and we can hide the node preview. It's entirely up to you, whatever works best for yourselves. Um, it's just a little bit of functionality to which we thought might come in handy. I'm going to look at uh, the changes we've made now to the uh, published parameters so we all know we can publish parameters from the function graph so here for instance in the simple um, I'm just trying to remember what I've just published there okay there's one so you can see when it's highlighted in a different color again color to your choice it's entirely up to you now um, we can publish a parameter which means it takes the settings from um, back here in the function editor publishes them on the front end previously once you'd published your parameters you were pretty much stuck with what you'd got um, other than unpublishing and then republishing and trying to get them in the order you want we now have increased functionality in this regard and as much as we can right click on each of the uh, published parameters and we can look at the published parameter editor so we can change the name of that to 
test filter, whatever you might want it to be. We can also change its group. So I can take, take it from the first group, test, and I can put it in test one. Just like that. So now we've ended up with the two tests. There, test has dropped down to the bottom. It's dropped down to the bottom because, again, if I right-click and publish the parameter, you can see that we also have the uh, ability to change the position of each of these um, published parameters to where you want them to be within the sequence. So you can see I changed that to position zero. So it jumped from the bottom to the very top. I hope you found all this useful. I find it to be incredibly useful. Each little improvement in terms of workflow makes work uh, easier and, and, a, and a more fun to place, place to be, especially when it comes to the, uh, the function editor. Um, keep your eyes open. We've got many more changes we've got planned for the function editor, which we hope will improve our workflow and, uh, and user experience. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.